taking down Dean Skelos and Shelly Silver, Pripahara is not nearly done. He famously said, stay tuned. Since then, he's opened up investigations of Governor Cuomo's office, as well as also Mayor Bill de Blasio. A new column by freelance journalist Ross Barkin asks whether anyone is in fact checking Preet's power. It says in part, quote, as Bahara has carried out his crusade against Albany and municipal malfeasance, I've looked on with equal parts admiration and unease. While there's plenty to celebrate about the way that he's pursued political corruption like a wolf after a bloody lamb shank, I find myself increasingly wary of his tactics. Bark, it's kind enough to join us now. And, and Ross, I'll ask the question, what part bothers you more, the, the showmanship or the fact that in many ways you're already convicted in the press before your day in court? I think it's a little bit of both. Um, one is the press aspect. Preet Bahara has been very much someone who's been willing to leak key details of the case to, pre to the press while he's still investigating a case, which not all U.S. attorneys do. And the showmanship as well has been very disconcerting for me because I think you know, you're a prosecutor, and I understand you want to prosecute the case and win, but you're also not a politician. It's one thing for a politician to be braggadocious or, or show a little flair, but in this case he's carrying out a very solemn duty and I think there is the risk of perverting justice if you are acting in this manner. Judge Caproni, um, who was the judge who sentenced uh, Silver, as many in our audience may remember, she smacked down um, Bahara for overstepping. Do you think she spoke for many or do you think most of the judges um, in the Southern District, look at him and say, you know what, there may be a lot of flair here, but the guy gets stuff done. It's a good question. I, I don't know, and I don't know what other judges are thinking. Look, with Preet Bahara, he's been very successful. He's done a lot of good things in terms of bringing to light these issues that for a long time went unaddressed. You know, public corruption was not prosecuted this strenuously until Preet Bahara really showed up on the scene um, you know, in 2009. At the same time, it, it just to, in the way, you know, to bring up an example, he ran the key details of an arrest of uh, two politicians a few years ago, and he put them on the front cover of newspaper on the actual day they were arrested. So there was the, the possibility of a politician reading about his arrest before it actually happened, and that, that raises all kinds of questions. So I imagine there are judges who maybe want to speak out more or who, or who feel like Caproni, that he does get out of line in the way he opines on the legislative process and really talks about things that prosecutors usually don't talk about. And as you say in the piece, there's two different schools on this. He's certainly not the first one, the U.S. attorney, um, who's used the media. I mean, just look at Rudy Giuliani and Chris Christie, uh, who obviously went to higher office using the U.S. attorney's position as a stepping stone. But you also say Loretta Lynch, um, you know, uh, and, and others, they've been more just the facts, ma'am. Uh, so, you know, you can do it both ways, right? You certainly can do it both ways. I think the danger in the way Preet has done it is when, you, when he starts to scrutinize someone, when you're at the receiving end of a federal investigation, just imagine what this means. The federal government has a vast amount of resources. They can investigate you forever and ever if they want to. And if you actually believe you are innocent, and we know in our criminal justice system we are presumed innocent, the minute this, these investigations begin, you show up in these headlines, your reputation is shot. It's really unfortunate, but it's true, and I don't want to be too sympathetic towards Dean Skelos or Sheldon Silver, but speaking generally, if you're the target of such an investigation and you're in the news, before charges are even brought, I'm not talking about an indictment, I'm not talking about a conviction, I'm just talking about scrutiny, that's an issue. And we don't see that, for example, with Paul Fishman investigating Chris Christie. When he brought charges, he brought charges, they were reported. We didn't know for months and months and months what exactly was happening. And I do think that's a fairer way to do things. If you wanted any um, further evidence um, about some of the questions as to maybe Bahar going too far, just uh, have, uh, as an audience out there, take a look at his statement here in the aftermath of the skeletal sentencing. He doesn't want to see any interference or basically any involvement for Albany um, in getting in his way for these investigations. So fascinating. Um, Ross, I really appreciate a few minutes. Thank you so much.
Thank you for having me. All right, well, I got three really good guys to, to get into this one. Um, is it naive to suggest that a U.S. attorney, even in lesser degrees, but in the end isn't a politician? I know they're not elected, but isn't there a political aspect to their job? Sure there is. I mean, to pretend otherwise is ridiculous. But, you know, to answer the question, what's the ultimate check on a prosecutor? I've had one of these jobs. In some sense, you have an, an unlimited budget and uh, an enormous amount of unreviewable power. But the fact is, you do, you know, your power is reviewed. First of all, you serve at the pleasure of the president. Second, uh, your, your cases are subject to scrutiny in the district that you bring them. So the judges have a power over uh, your actions. And the third, frankly, and most important thing is public sentiment. I mean, ultimately, what it is you can do and in the environment in which you act, you respond to, to public sentiment. Okay, to that end, though, Bahar, whether, and I don't know who leaked what, but let's dispel with some naivete to say that there wasn't some knowledge what was going to get into the papers. And I know Mark's going to have an opinion on this in a second, uh, having represented or representing Malcolm Smith being one of the people on the cover of those tabs. You feed the beast. You get the public invested in this. Right. Preet Bahara got guys like me and the public invested in cleaning up Albany before these guys had their day in court. But nonetheless, he consciously said, you know what? If the governor's not going to make this an issue, I'm going to make this the issue. And I don't need the legislature to get behind me on this. I'm going to get the public and I got the Daily News and the Post run flashy tabs, um, you know, covers on this stuff. Is is that okay? Are you uncomfortable sure, with how far he went? Well, it, it has limits, but there's no problem about a prosecutor acting in an environment to shape public sentiment, which well, is in is part... there is a problem when it taints a jury pool. Well, and, sure, and, there are and, limits. So That's let, the let's limit. Not, let's not bend over backwards. Well, let's be clear. You represent Malcolm Smith. I do, but I'm going to talk about uh, Silver right now. Let's not bend over backwards to praise Judge Caproni for what she did, because a motion was made to dismiss the indictment or to sanction the prosecutor, Bahara, for a deliberate effort through the public forum to influence potential jurors in the case, and she brushed that off completely and gave it the back of the hand. In my organization, the New York State Association of Criminal Defense Lawyers, together with the National Association of Criminal Defense Lawyers, put a brief in in that case, backing the defendant and requesting okay, the same relief. Mark, she did to nothing. the lay person here, what was different what Bahara said than other prosecutors? For example, take uh, the case of Officer Leanne. The district attorney said, made it loud and clear that he was going to push for an indictment. That's okay. Why wouldn't that be prejudicial special to a court, jury too? Special court rules apply in the Southern and Eastern District of New York that govern what participants in a litigation can say to the press and they're tailored to uh, meet constitutional requirements and comport with the First Amendment. You're supposed to give a, a factual recitation of the indictment, not preach about a culture of corruption in Albany and I'm going to go wherever it leads Fair me point. to clean all of this up and we're going to clean it up and whether Albany wants to or not. So <laughs> you're poisoning a jury pool. And, and, and I, don't, he, I wouldn't go that he, far. You're, you're deliberately attempting to shape the jury pool before the facts come out of trial. And the police of this are supposed to be, supposed so to be. So this isn't rhetorical. Is there a different standard for a U.S. attorney than there is for a DA? There is a different standard because, well, for the D all prosecutors are supposed to pursue justice. Um, there are specific court rules here that govern how the U.S. attorney and me as a defense lawyer is supposed to act. There are ethical rules that apply in New York that mm. uh, discuss in more general terms how you deal with the press. But just very, very quickly, the ultimate policeman, the ultimate check on this is supposed to be the judiciary. But the federal judiciary, at least here, is packed with ex-prosecutors who are basically very sympathetic to Preet Bharara well, and that, the Jimmy, U.S. attorney's do position. Do judges like him or not? I know it's a, it's a loaded I, question, but what do you think? I, I happen to think that there are many judges that may respect him, respect what he's doing, respect his office, but are, are not at all enthused with these public statements that go absolutely way too far. You know, you, you talk about public sentiment, and I agree that you have to shape public sentiment, but he is testing legal principles here and making sure mm. that the well, public is so statement, polluted. And then I want to get your guys' reaction to it. This statement came from Preet Bahara in the aftermath of the sentencing today. And this, uh, for is, this is Exhibit A of okay. what I'm talking about. And this about. is just a portion of it, but this is what he had to say. 
The most affection, effective excuse me, corruption investigations are those that are truly independent and not in danger of either interference or premature shutdown. Obviously, reference with the Moreland Commission here right. or any interference from Albany. He wants to do whatever he wants. But wait until a second, the court gets beyond wrist slaps and reverses a conviction, he will not stop. I got two very vocal um, defense attorneys making a convincing case. I guess but I, did he go too far? I guess I resemble that remark. But, uh, <laughs> you know, look. Um, too far. I, uh, there, are, there is clearly danger about shaping public sentiment in your public voice as probably the premier prosecutor in the United States. But remember, you know, the audience is not just the jury pool. The audience is the people, uh, the citizens of, of your district. But that's why there are elected officials who speak to that audience, well, and a prosecutor has a higher calling. Robert, He's I, supposed to worry I about don't the have a problem. I don't have a problem with a little bit of grandstanding because you're right. The, the, it's it's politics, but that statement right there is basically saying I conduct, out of my way. I conduct truly independent investigations. The governor does not. He prematurely shut something down. I picked it up. You can trust me. When I come out here and say A, B, C, and D, you can believe it. I you can tell take you, though, it guys, you. maybe you don't. I think I'm his audience. I like it. I, I, I'm so sick and tired. That's why you shouldn't be the audience, right. and that's why said, we have judges he, that are instructed in accordance with the law, because as, as Rob aptly pointed out in the first segment of this section, there are federalism constraints. It's about who prosecutes, and the Constitution says that states prosecute except in the rare extraordinary case. No general police well, he's power. Saying, it's reserved to the He's states. saying this is the exception because basically that shot across the bow today following mm. the sentencing was essentially the doing their they're same thing. Doing their job. Look, I he's gave them so many exceptions I, that there's no I, rule I left. gave them the chance and the shot at trying to do this. They set up a commission, mm. you know, people yeah. co supposedly cooperated with that and then the politicians in the state of New York shut it down. Yeah. That's when only then did I act. Look, well, he better I, hope he's very, very, very squeaky clean because in my experience, no person with that much naked ambition does not have skeletons in their own closet and they usually take Another skeletons. shot across the Spectacular, oh, right. spectacular tell, fall. Tell us how, tell us how you really feel. Yeah, exactly, Mark. All right, if you haven't gotten your fill of corruption, another chapter in another part of New York. Next, the chief of police arrested by the FBI. Serial killer case that remains unsolved. Sounds like a plot for a movie, right? Well, it's not. It's Suffolk County. You need to be dug tonight. And all that is causing the county exec to demand the resignation of the DA. You heard me? The county exec wants the resignation of the DA. The DA said not so fast. This is where the